An equilateral prism is placed on a horizontal surface. A ray PQ is incident on it for minimum deviation. PQ is horizontal, QR is horizontal, RS is horizontal, or QR is vertical. All right, so we are talking about prism and minimum deviation. So the key concept involved here is that for minimum deviation, angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence. Okay, so if this is angle of incidence, this is angle of emergence, they have to be equal in case of minimum deviation. Okay, now using this underlying concept, let's see how to solve the question. Okay, now the medium surrounding the prism is the same. Okay, so if this is I, which is angle of incidence, and this R is angle of refraction, okay, then this angle is also going to be R. Okay, we know that pretty well. Now this angle is 90 degree, this angle is also 90 degree because they are normal to the surface. Now for a minute, let's assume that this angle and this angle is same, okay? What I'm saying, the base angles are equal, okay? Now, this angle is 90 plus R and this angle is also 90 plus R, so they are equal. And the base angles are also equal, which means if I call this Q prime R prime, then the quadrilateral Q R R prime Q prime becomes what? it becomes an isosceles trapezium, okay? If that is the case, then we can see QR is going to be parallel to Q prime R prime. Now the base is given horizontal, so QR is also going to be horizontal, all right? So we have obviously solved our question. But wait, there is some clarification which is required, okay? Now let's see the base was, let's assume that the base was something like this. Now would this affect the path of light? Obviously not, it would not. Now in this case, is QR parallel to the base? No, it is not, okay? So we have to be very careful that in case of minimum deviation, the light ray inside the prism becomes parallel to the base only when the base angles are equal, otherwise not, okay? So QR is horizontal as per our question because in the question, it is an equilateral prism and hence base angles are equal. So what will be the correct option? QR is going to be the QR is going to be horizontal and option B is going to be the correct option. But a very important takeaway or caution here is that light ray inside the prism will be parallel to the base only if base angles of the prism are equal, okay? But angle of incidence is always going to be angle of emergence and that is the basic principle we have to remember about minimum deviation. All right, let's move forward. The angle of incidence for a ray of light at a refracting surface of a prism is 45 degree. The angle of prism is 60 degree. If the ray suffers minimum deviation through the prism, the angle of minimum deviation and refractive index of the material of the prism respectively are assuming surrounding medium to be air, okay? So we are talking about minimum deviation. So obviously the key concept involved here is that for minimum deviation, mu is equal to sine delta m plus a by two divided by sine a by two, where delta m is the angle of minimum deviation, a is the angle of prism, mu is the refractive index of the material of the prism, given that the surrounding is air, and also r is equal to a by two. Okay, what is r? Now for minimum deviation, we also know that angle of incidence will be equal to angle of emergence. And these angles R1 and R2 become equal to R in case of minimum deviation. And this is equal to A by two, all right? So this, these are the results or these are the concepts we need to be aware of in order to solve this question. So now let's proceed with solving the question. Now see, there are many results, many steps. So a good idea would be to create a mental map, okay? What do we need to calculate? We need to calculate delta M, okay? What do we know about delta M, okay? Unless angle of prism is not very small, which is not the case here, we know only one relationship for delta M, and that is mu is equal to sine A plus delta M by two upon sine A by two, which tells me there are two things missing over here. One is mu and one is A. If I know it, I can solve it. So A is something we know, it is given to us. Do we know mu? No, we don't know mu. Okay, let's try to find out a relationship for mu. So refraction is happening at this boundary. So can I write Snell's law for this refraction? Obviously I can, okay? So this R1 is equal to R, we have already established that, okay? So can I say sin i by sin r is going to be equal to mu? Yes, absolutely. So now what do I need to find out mu? I need i and r, okay? 
Now, do I know I? Yes, I has been given. So this is sorted. But do I know R? No, I don't know R directly. But there is a relationship which is going to help me. So R is going to be A by 2. So I know R as well. So I'm sorted here. All I need to do is follow these steps. All right, so let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to write mu is equal to sine i, which is sine 45 degree divided by sine r. Now what is r? r is going to become 30 degree. a is 60 degree, so r is going to be 30 degree. So this becomes sine 30 degree. So sine 45 degree is 1 by root 2 and sine 30 degree is 1 by 2. So this is going to go upstairs. So this is going to become root 2. Okay. So mu have I found out? Yes, mu I have found out. Okay. So can I write root 2? Now I'm substituting it over here. Mu is equal to root 2 is equal to sine of A, which is 60 degree plus delta M, which is something I need to find out divided by 2 divided by sine A by 2. Now sine A by 2 is 30 degree, sine 30 degree. Okay. Now sine 30 degree, uh, let's move the calculation over here. So root 2 multiplied by sine 30 degree, which is half is going to be equal to sine 60 degree plus delta m divided by 2. Is that correct? Now this becomes 1 by root 2. So on the left hand side, I have 1 by root 2. So can I say that 60 degree plus delta m divided by 2 is going to be equal to 45 degree? Absolutely. Sine 45 degrees 1 by root 2. I can do that. So delta m is going to be equal to 90 degree minus 60 degree is equal to 30 degree. And that is going to be my answer. All right. So I've figured out both the things. What are the things? Delta m is equal to 30 degree and mu is equal to root 2. Both the answers found. And let's move to the options. So option D is going to be the right option. Find the angle of deviation produced by the prism mu is equal to root 3 for the situation shown in the figure. Okay, what is the situation? The refractive index of the prism is root 3, surrounding is air, angle of prism is 60 degree and a light ray is incident at an angle 60 degree on one of the face of the prisms. Okay, we have to find out what is the angle of deviation. So the key concept involved here is that the angle of deviation is equal to angle of incidence plus angle of emergence minus angle of the prism. Okay. So in this question, we know what is I, we know what is A. So what we have to figure out is E. If we are able to do that, we can solve this question. All right. Now, what is the path or method I need to follow? My objective is to find E. Okay. So if I know the refractive index of air as well as prism, now if I know the angle of incidence, I can find out R1 using Snell's law. Now, using the relationship between a r1 and r2, I can then find out r2. And again, using Snell's law on the other surface, I can find out e. Is that correct? Okay. Although sounds like a tedious process, but at least I know how I should proceed. All right. So let's get started with application of Snell's law at this surface. Okay. So Snell's law tells me that mu1 sin i1 is equal to mu2 sin i2. Now, what is mu1? Light is going from air to the prism. So mu1 is going to be 1. Sin i1 is going to be sin 60 degree is equal to mu2 is going to be root 3 and sin i2 I am writing it as r1. Okay. So sin r1. So this becomes root 3 by 2 is equal to root 3 sin r1. Root 3 gone r1 comes out to be 30 degree. Is that correct? Absolutely. Next a is equal to r1 plus r2. Yes. So A is 60 degree, R1 is 30 degree. So what will be the value of R2? R2 will become 30 degree, correct? Now before application of Snell's law on the other surface, let's see something which is happening here. Something very interesting is happening here, okay? So this angle has become 30 degree and this angle has also become 30 degree. Now you see that when angle of incidence is 60 degree, angle of refraction is 30 degree. But now angle of incidence has become 30 degree. What will be the angle of refraction? Okay, so here I'm going to tell you a very interesting principle, which is known as the principle of reversibility of path of light. Okay, which states that if the direction of light is reversed, okay, like this, I have reversed the direction of light. 
then the light is going to follow the same path. It is going to follow the same path. Okay. So how does it help me? Now, when we were going from left to right, okay, initially, when we were going from left to right, the angle of incidence was 60 degree, angle of refraction was 30 degree, okay. Now, the light was going from air to the prism. Now, in the reverse journey, light is going from air to prism, okay. Now, what should be the angle of incidence? So that the angle of refraction is still 30 degree because we can see by the reverse path that angle of refraction, refraction is going to be 30 degree. Is that correct? Okay. Do I already know the answer? Absolutely. Okay. That same situation has happened over here. So the angle of incidence here has to be equal to 60 degree. Is that correct? Okay. So angle of incidence and angle of emergence both are going to be 60 degree and hence finding delta is a piece of cake. So delta is equal to I plus E minus A. So this comes out to be 60 degree. All right. But I also have to tell what is the direction. Okay. The light ray wanted to go like this, but it got deviated like this. Hence, this is the angle of deviation. And what is the direction? It is clockwise. So my answer is going to be 60 degree clockwise. Now let's have a look at the options and option A is going to be the right option. Okay. The key takeaway here is principle of reversibility of light, which states that light follows the same path if the direction of travel of light is reversed. Very, very interesting and important principle. Do keep this in mind. Figure shows the graph of angle of deviation delta versus the angle of incidence i for the light ray striking a prism. The prism angle is, so we have the delta versus i graph. We need to find out what is the angle of prism, okay? Now the key concept involved here is the principle of reversibility of light, which states that light follows the same path if the direction of travel of light is reversed, okay? What does that mean? Now light is traveling from left to right, correct? Now here, if I just change the direction of light, it is still going to follow the same path, okay? What does it mean? It has a very interesting consequence, okay? When light is traveling from left to right, this is the angle of incidence, this is the angle of emergence, perfect? There would be some angle of deviation, very nice. Now, when we reverse this, when we reverse this, this becomes the angle of incidence and this becomes the angle of emergence. I and E are reversed, okay? What does it mean? That when I is the angle of incidence, E is the angle of emergence. But when E becomes the angle of incidence, I will become the angle of emergence, okay? So basically for every angle of deviation, we will have two values of angle of incidence as you can see in the plot, okay? So this is the angle of deviation. So you see two angle of incidence for the plot. Why is that the case? Because when 15 degree is angle of incidence, 60 degrees angle of emergence, but when 60 degrees angle of incidence, 15 degree is the angle of emergence. Is that correct? Okay. So this pair is the incidence and emergence pair. Is that correct? And it is interchangeable. That is a very important and interesting consequence of reversibility of path of light. Okay. Now it tells me very simply, what does it tell me? That if you take this as I, this becomes E. Okay. Now there's nothing left to this question. Now delta is equal to I plus E minus A. Do we know that? Of course. So delta is 30 degree. What is I? I'm taking that as 15 degree. E will become 60 degree minus A. Okay. So A is going to become 75 degree minus 30 degree is equal to 45 degree and that is going to be my answer. So you see this principle makes solving this question so simple. Okay. That is the answer and let's have a look at the options. So option B is going to be the right option. For the angle of minimum deviation of a prism to be equal to its refracting angle, the prism must be made of a material whose refractive index lies between root 2 and 1, lies between 2 and root 2, is less than 1 or greater than 2. Okay. So the condition here which needs to be fulfilled is the angle of minimum deviation should be equal to the refracting angle or the angle of the prism. Okay. Now the key concept involved here is that for minimum deviation, mu is equal to sine delta m plus a by 2 divided by sine a by 2. 
and R becomes equal to A by 2. And also in case of minimum deviation, the angle of incidence becomes equal to the angle of emergence. Okay, keeping these things in mind, let's try to solve this question. Okay, so the condition is minimum deviation. So obviously I can use this. What I have been given is delta M is equal to A. Okay, so can I say that mu is equal to sine A plus A, 2A divided by 2 is sine A divided by sine A by 2. But I want to simplify this a little further. So I can write it as sine 2 times A by 2 divided by sine A by 2. So now I'm going to use the formula for sine 2 theta. So mu will be equal to 2 sine A by 2 into cos A by 2 divided by sine A by 2. Okay, so from here sine A by 2 gets cancelled and we are left with 2 cos A by 2. Perfect. So mu we have found out a simple relationship with the angle of prism A. Alright, now here we'll be very tempted to say that in the first quadrant cos A by 2 can lie between 0 and 1. So refractive index will lie between 0 and 2. We'll be very tempted to say it at this point. But we should remember the other relationships as well, okay? So in case of minimum deviation, what we know is that delta M becomes equal to 2i minus A. The angle of incidence and angle of emergence becomes equal. Now this delta M is given to us as A is equal to 2i minus A. So from here, what do we get? From here, we get I or we can say A is equal to I, okay? So A is not independent of A anything, right? It cannot assume all the values. It has to assume value which is equal to i, okay? And for a prism, what do we know? What are the values that angle of incidence can take? So the minimum value it can take is when it is incident like this, then the angle of incidence is going to be zero. And the maximum value it can take is when it is incident like this, the angle of incidence will become 90 degree, okay? So can I say the maximum value of a is going to be equal to the maximum value of i which is 90 degree and the minimum value of a is going to be the minimum value of i which is 0 degree. Is that correct? The cos here is a decreasing function in the first quadrant. So if I want to find out mu max, I will have to substitute the value of a minimum. So this becomes 2k cos a minimum is 0. So this becomes 2 that is the maximum value of mu. And to find out minimum value of mu, we'll have to substitute A max. So this becomes 2 cos 90 degree divided by 2 is equal to 2 cos 45 degree or root 2. So what do we get? We get that the refractive index can lie between root 2 and 2 and that is going to be my answer. All right, let's have a look at the options. So option B is going to be the right option.